I'm doing well. Uh, there are some uh, mad Texans fans around here this uh, this evening. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, uh, talk to me about this one. I mean, the huge comeback falls short uh, in overtime. A uh, huge comeback falls short, and uh, I'll be real honest with you, Corey. This is uh, the mo for the Houston Texans. Um, many, many games have they have they done this second half comeback thing, um, only to fall short. Uh, now standing at a five and eight team, uh, they're most likely going to miss the playoffs. And uh, I'll be real honest with you, the Houston fans are really, really used to this sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like this team, for the past past few years, Dennis, it, they've been on the cusp of being a, a really decent playoff competitive team, and they just can't seem to get over that hump, can they? Really on the cusp. Uh, you know, I did a couple preseason interviews uh, for a couple different radio shows, and, you know, I said on paper this team's a 10-6 team. If they get the breaks going their way throughout the season, and they really just haven't, they've continued to be the team that is a decent team on paper, a talented team on paper, a team that can play with competitive teams on paper, yet they continually fall short in the, like, one second of every game that they're hanging in. Oh, it must be just it's heartbreaking for some of those fans, especially, you know, they get the stop in overtime, it looks like things are going to go their way, and then Matt Shop throws the game away. I tell you, Matt Schaub was, was, was pretty solid tonight. Yeah. Um, Jacoby Jones decided he wanted to catch footballs again in the second half. Uh, um, you know, the, the Ravens' defense was stymieing them a bit in the first half. Then, then the Texans come back and, and give up a kickoff return, opening up the second half. And, uh, you know, then, then pull out their heart. They find where their heart is. Uh, in the second half, they continue throughout the second half to get that into overtime. Uh, they come up with a couple big stops on defense in the, the first possession of the Ravens in overtime. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Matt Schaub makes, makes a, a really, really fatal mistake. And, and you know, you can't blame it all on Matt. But, but hey, the, 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 that was a, a poor decision to make that throw. Dennis Kelly joining us here from NBC in Houston. What You kind of mentioned some of the scoring there. What in your mind sort of turned this game for the Texans to get them back into it? Uh, well, halftime. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every week it's the same thing. You know, they they start off slow. I, I don't know. I don't know how you can't get hyped for a Monday night game of all yeah. games, but they they always start off slow. Um, and then at halftime, you know, who knows what Gary Kubiak says to them? Gary Kubiak, Kubiak's not a really fiery guy, um, but you know, someone must be in there at halftime getting them fired up for these games. Uh, but, man, it's just a really disappointing thing. Um, you know, the Houston fans have been let down time and time again, uh, you know, by this talented team that, you know, just it, just not able to put four quarters together. You know what would be cool if they could play six quarters? They would really, really <laughs> thrive in that, I think. Yeah, well, they might get down further, though, in the first three, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right, Corey. Absolutely right. Dennis Kelly joining us here from NBC in Houston. You know, you look at that division now, Jacksonville's 8-5, and five, Indy's 7-6, and six, and, and this, this one clearly is a, is just a crushing loss, though, for Houston, isn't it? A crushing loss, uh, especially with the Jags' win, the win over the Raiders yesterday. You know, they did. They, the Jags this season have been the team, the, the, the sort of anti-Texans, the team that's been able to yeah. pull out the fourth quarter wins. You know, they had the one against the Texans, then they did it again yesterday against the Raiders. Uh, you know, the, the, the Colts have sort of been stumbling, uh, sort of in a similar way as, as the Texans. Uh, you know, I think the Jags are the class of this, uh, this AFC South right now. Who would have ever thought at the beginning of the season that we would say the Jacksonville Jaguars are the class of the AFC South? But Maurice Jones, Drew, David Garrard, those guys are playing really, really well right now. Um, so, you know, I, I think they end up taking, taking this division w- without a doubt. Where do the Houston's go, or the Texans go next year with this? I mean, the staff's been around for a little while now. What do they do next in this off season? Are there changes to come? You think? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. The city wants some changes. Uh, that, that is an absolute fact. Um, you know, there, there are uh, numerous websites that are calling for Gary Kubiak's head, and and you know, this this would have been a, a real, real important win uh, in terms of him keeping his job. Um, you know, Gary Kubiak's a good guy. He's a good coach. Uh, um, uh, you know, just a real nice guy. But at some point, uh, um, you know, we as fans and we as the guys that work in this business, yeah. we say, hey, uh, you know, you might not need the nice guy. You might need the guy that's a yeller. You might need the guy that's going to light a fire into these guys, to, you know, to get them going, to get to be able to pull out those last second wins. And, you know, uh, in, in my opinion, I do think that there will be some changes coming up. I think it's a whole coaching renovation. Uh, you know, Frank Bush, the defensive coordinator, uh, has had just a, a horrendous year. His defense, yeah. his secondary has been just awful. 
Um, and, and, you know, a lot of it falls on Gary Kubiak because, you know, he's the guy up front. Hey, he's not calling the defense. He's calling the offense. But, uh, you know, it, uh, he's the, the figurehead, and it's going to all fall on him. And I think I think there will be some changes here at the end of the season. You kind of mentioned that D. It's, it's a fairly young D in Houston. They do have some pieces up front as well. So uh, you, you kind of talked about this team on paper being a 10-6 and six team. I, I, you got to think there's got to be some positives moving next year if there's some changes in the coaching staff then. Absolutely, absolutely. They have, uh, you know, I think their their most experienced guy on at the corner position is a third year guy, um, and you know, you're right. Up front, they have Mario Williams, Antonio Smith. Yeah. These guys are guys that get after the quarterback and uh, you know, higher draft picks and, and guys that do have that intensity. Brian Cushing, D'Amico Ryan's got hurt earlier in the year, really put a damper on this defense. He's a vocal leader out there. Um, but you're right. There there is a, a good core of young guys that could potentially in the future really get something together. But, again, the question begs to be, is there a guy that can get them fired up and teach them the right things to do, teach them the right places to be so that they're not getting burned as often as they have been this season? And I guess lastly here for you, Dennis uh, Dennis Kelly joining us here from NBC in Houston. You mentioned the Colts. They've been up and down. What, what kind of team, like you watch this division obviously very closely, are they the team that everybody thinks that they should be, or are they a team in disarray a little bit to you? Uh, they seem to be a team in a little bit of disarray. Uh, you know, it seems like Peyton Manning has some other stuff going on in his head. Um, you know, it, it, who really knows? Um, that, that Jim Caldwell, uh, you know, he's been there a while now, and this team is just, just does not look like the team that they have before. They just don't look as disciplined as they have before. Yeah. Um, Peyton Manning's throwing all these interceptions and, and pick sixes on top of that, and, and you can't just keep continuing to do that. Um, so, yeah, this, the, the Colts team, uh, they, they – are really, really in disarray. They're not. They're not the Colts that we've become accustomed to seeing over the past, you know, five to ten years with Peyton Manning at the helm being, uh, you know, the stalwart general that he has always has been on for those those Colts. Dennis Kelly from NBC in Houston. Thanks for taking the time tonight, Dennis. Appreciate it. All right, Corey. Take care now.